Hey there, Scorpio. Welcome to your reading. This is your uh, August bonus reading. We're going to look at the main events. Sorry, wrong camera. Uh, we're going to look at the main events for the month of August. So the first thing we're going to look at, and this is how uh, each thing is going to potentially affect you. Uh, we're going to look at this triple conjunction with Mars, Uranus, the North Node in Taurus, and that's going to be uh, basically on the first. They're all going to be at 18 degrees on the first of August. Uh, in the second row, we're going to look at the full moon in Aquarius, and that's going to be on August 11th, and we're going to see how that affects your sign. I like that. You have the starfish card, and you have that beetle, which says good fortune. Uh, and Scorpio, I have to say, look, I mean, damn. <laughs> look at this. Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Cups, Empress. Really, really nice. Uh, in the next row, we're going to look at the Uranus retrograde on the 24th, and um, that's going to be that there. And uh, finally, in your last row, we're going to be looking at the new moon in Virgo that will be on the 27th. And uh, that'll be that, Scorpio. But so far, this looks pretty amazing, is what I would say to you. So definitely some good stuff. You start off here uh, on the first with the conjunction. You have this uh, renewal. And it, this, it says frog spirit. It says renewal. And you have this ladder. It says climbing towards success. Uh, I would say this whole entire reading is about climbing towards success, obviously. Uh, I also feel that there could be like a lot of signs and symbols happening around you that are kind of, um, you, know, you know, that are really, um, really showing you success in, in a lot of ways. Like I feel like there could be a lot of successful signs and symbols. And I know I'm blabbering at the moment, but what I'm trying to spit out here, Scorpio, is that there could be things that mean success to you, like 11, 11 on the clock. Maybe there's feathers that you see. Maybe you always get a certain feeling or maybe you always run into a certain person and then make a bunch of money or something like that. I don't know. There could be like, um, I don't want to say good luck charms because I don't really, that's not what I feel here. I feel like this is something that you look, that you have kind of like worked towards, that you've been working for, um, this renewal, this happiness, climbing the ladder. And again, sometimes I think, I think by saying luck, you're kind of, um, discounting the work that you put into it. <laughs> so I don't want to call it luck for you here, although I do feel like luck is on your side. Clearly, you have that good fortune card there. You have a lot of other lucky stuff going on here. But again, I feel like this is something that you've been working towards, and I feel like there's a lot of signs and symbols. I also feel like you feel kind of refreshed and renewed here with this energy. So I really like that. You have the Seven of Wands, the Ten of Pentacles, and the uh, fool here. The Seven of Wands, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Cancer had this in the same position. The Seven of Wands is a card of conviction. It's a card of defending, you know, he's defending his position at the top of a hill. But really, it's a card that says when you know that you know that you are going to be successful or that you're going to make something successful, it will be successful. So I feel like you need to kind of like really believe something on a very deep level. And if you do, then it's going to be more successful than if you don't, obviously. So a big kind of play on your beliefs here. You have the Ten of Pentacles next, uh, right next to the, you know, you have the Ten of Cups right next to it. Love it. I love when the Ten of Pentacles and Ten of Cups are kind of like touching in a reading or right next to each other or on top of each other or whatever. To me, it's kind of like a symbol of everything that you want in your life. Ten of Pentacles, those Ten Pentacles form the Tree of Life on the Ten of Pentacles. And the, ten, the Tree of Life kind of represents, again, everything that you want in your life. It's also a card of like happy home, happy family times 10 when it shows up with the Ten of Cups. Ten of Cups is the happy home, happy family, but there's also a happy home and a happy family right here, right on the card with the two dogs as well. So bonus as far as I'm concerned here, Scorpio. And so I feel there could be a lot of happiness coming in for you uh, at this time. So it looks good to me. Uh, I feel like maybe you're just kind of falling into the energy is the feeling I get. You know, I, I think the danger of the first with the, that triple conjunction, even though it's kind of already happening, I'm shooting these videos on the 29th. I never know what day it is, so I have to look at my calendar. But um, today is the 29th. And, you know, the danger with it, I wouldn't say it's a danger, but I feel like we just need to be very flexible, as I've said to everyone else. But I kind of feel like you're just kind of embracing the energy, feeling it, loving it, <laughs> all that other good stuff. And uh, finally, you have The Fool. Um, almost everyone has had The Fool uh, at this time, and I feel like we are in a time of great new beginnings and great transformations. So, you know, I, I think we're all undergoing a lot of change, and you know, that can be a little bit confusing, a little bit scary. I think one of the biggest challenges with the ty these types of changes is that I think society, life, maybe our parents or people in our life have like, I, I think we're kind of raised to get into some something 
like a career and we're expected to like have a family and we're expected to follow this like path right that that like who who makes up these rules number one i i have no freaking clue but what i would say is it's like we have there are these like societal expectations i think the challenge for pretty much everyone especially with neptune and pisces as well is it's kind of like a direct neptune and pisces is a direct challenge to traditional belief and then we have this conjunction on the first, I feel like it's like kind of like the beginning for a lot of people where it's like saying, no, like, what is your path? <laughs> what does your path look like? What is the risk that you want to take? You know, do you even want to keep doing the same things that you've been doing? And for some of you, the answer might be yes. And again, there's no right or wrong here. That is perfectly acceptable, perfectly fine. And you'll be very successful. Again, there is no right or wrong here. For others, you might be saying, no, I want to change. I want to do different things. I think we're here. We're meant to create. We're meant to experience. That doesn't mean we're meant to like go to law school, become a lawyer. Yuck, right? And, um, and you know, do, do the lawyerings whatever that means, right? I think that maybe for some people find that enjoying, uh, in, uh, you know, find enjoyment in doing that. And if you do, great, do it. But for the most part, I feel like most people don't really want to do that, right? It's like, have you ever tried to read a law book? Um, you know, last time I did it, I cried. So probably a bad idea is what I would say to you, Scorpio. And, and, unless, again, unless you really enjoy it then by all means. But I kind of get, for some of you, I feel like you're in this more creative zone where you maybe want to have more experiences. Again, two tens like this, you know, right next to each other. This is a lot of stuff. It's like wanting to have in, you know, more experience, wanting to, you know, taste all the flavors of the world, uh, you know, wanting to enjoy multiple things. And that's kind of what I see your, that's where your life is kind of going that direction. Uh, next, you have the starfish. So a lot of luck coming in for you. I also feel that there are multiple directions that you could be taking at this time. This is coming up, sorry, I forgot to say it. This is coming up in the area of the full moon on uh, in Aquarius on August 11th. So you have that starfish. You also have this beetle, which says good fortune on it. So clearly there are gonna be some good fortunes coming in for you on the, or, or around the 11th, I should say. I kind of feel, again, that this is something that you have worked towards. Remember, like I said, I, I don't want to use the word luck, luck because I feel like that is discounting the work that you have put into whatever you've been working towards, right, clearly. So it's not just like luck. I feel like there is luck here, which is going to amplify the success, but I also feel like you've been working very hard. The starfish, again, fits in very well with the astrology this month. The starfish card, you can see that it has these five legs. In this card in this deck, can kind of represent the opportunity to move in any direction. It basically says it doesn't just have to move forward. It can move sideways or, you know, at an angle. It can move backwards. It can move to the left, to the right, whatever, right? So it kind of reminds you to be flexible. And I've pretty much been saying to everyone that I would be super flexible this, uh, I don't know, for the rest of your life, honestly. You know, I know that this conjunction isn't going to last forever, obviously. But, you know, what I would say is just I feel like the future is going to be good for those of us that can, you know, find multiple ways of doing things, right? Let's put it that way. <laughs> you have the three of wands, the 10 of cups, and the empress here. Uh, amazing. Clearly a lot of abundance that you are creating in your own life. I also feel that you're okay with things changing. What I mean by that is she has this waterfall. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right here by my finger and it ends right here. If you can see that, Scorpio. And the waterfall represents like chaotic force in the tarot. And really the waterfall is the energy that's coming from the emperors flowing down to her in the tarot. But the, the waterfall kind of is tied to like the tower. It can represent a destructive force. If you were at the bottom of a waterfall, you'd be getting tossed around and be crazy down there, right? So she understands like life and death. She understands, um, you know, that death leads to something new, like creating something new. And that's kind of popping into my head. I feel like you're, again, very creative at this time. I feel like you have a lot of ideas. I really feel like you're just very tapped into the energy. And that's probably what's leading to the abundance this month for you. I also feel like you're very attractive at this time. I wouldn't really, again, I wouldn't really call this a love reading. You do have the Ten of Cups here, but I do feel if you're looking for love, I would definitely get out there with that Empress. Um, you do have the Three of Cups right next to it as well. Three of Cups is a card of community, and the Ten of Cups is my card of dating. So for those of you that are looking for love, probably a good time to socialize, um, You know, get out in the community, meet a person, all that other good stuff. I also feel that the Ten of Cups is like fortune after difficulty. And so if you've been having a difficult time, I feel there's a lot of happiness coming in for you. The other important thing here with the Ten of Cups 
is that these people, they, you know, they're focusing on these 10 cups, but they're in the real world. You know, the card itself, uh, a lot of like some, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but there are some tarot books that talk about the 10 of cups being like a card of choosing what you focus on. They still have to deal with the everyday problems of that are going on in the world. There's still all the craziness of the world that's going on around them, but they are choosing to focus on the 10 cups. They're choosing to focus on happiness, joy, you know, the things that they have in their life. And uh, I'm a big fan of doing that. I'm a big fan of, you know, being ridiculously positive. So, <laughs> and, and as I always say, it's free. So why not try it, right? Uh, you do have the three of wands here. <coughs> Excuse me. The three of wands is a card of expansion, growth, uh, new opportunities. And you also, I will show you, you also have the six of wands right here in this diagonal. So a lot of signs have been getting messages about like attention or getting attention on things. It's kind of weird because like last year I was getting a lot of these messages about attention and like how important the use of attention is. That means your attention on things, but it also means you getting attention onto things. And we're talking about positive attention here. We're not talking about like, you know, getting negative attention on things. That's not going to work any longer. But what I would say is this three of wands, I feel like it's saying like something is ready to be presented. It could be yourself. You you could be ready to present yourself to the world in fine love, for example. And I feel like there's a lot of good fortune, a lot of luck in doing that. You could be presenting a project or a business. And again, I feel like it's time. For whatever reason, I'm getting this like need for feedback. Like I feel, you know, maybe I think sometimes we're afraid to put things out into the world because maybe we'll get burned, right? We'll get hurt. You have this fire card next. It's actually a good card, but you know, at the same time, I feel like there's the fear of fire here in this row with the full moon in Aquarius. The thing about Aquarius is innovation. It's doing something new, right? So I feel like you need to present something like a baby. <laughs> you know, the, the empress is the mother. She is the baby or she has the baby. And I feel like you need to present something to the world. And maybe there's some fear of being burned and maybe you will get burned. But at the same time, I feel like the feedback is critically important for you this month. So I'd be, you know, if you're thinking about presenting something, I actually feel like, you know, I don't want to call it criticism, but again, you know, I feel there could be some, you know, valid criticisms that come out of you presenting something, but it's just going to make you better. And that's how I'd look at it. Uh, next in the area of the Uranus retrograde on the 24th, you have the new moon eclipse. It says expect powerful change. You also have the fire card. It says strong emotion, passionate love or hate. So I feel like there could be very passionate emotions uh, coming in for you. Just, you know, again, just based off the astrology and everything else going on, I, I think the more passionate we can be about things, the more they're going to work out for us. Seven of Wands. Again, like I said, Seven of Wands is about believing something deep down in your soul, believing that something is for you, for example, believing that you're going to be successful. It's like the deeper you believe it, the more passionate you are about it, the more successful you're going to be. Um, so I feel like building that fire and doing things that kind of get that fire going are going to be important. You know, for example, it's like, you know, doing, I've been reading tarot on YouTube for like seven years now, right? Over seven years now. And it's like, if I didn't, like I have this stack of books, I don't know if you can see it, but I have, I always have every single book uh, for the decks that I'm using over here. Before I read every single day, before I sit down to read, I always kind of flip through some of those books and I, you know, I look at some of the cards and I, I don't like spend like a ton of time doing it, but you know, over seven years, having done it like every single day, I've gained a lot more wisdom and knowledge over what the cards mean, right? Because I'm constantly updating it, but it also keeps it fresh. It's like, I've been doing it for seven years, right? So it's like, there's only so much I can say. And so I'm building that fire. It's like something that keeps me motivated, something that keeps me interested interested in tarot is constantly learning about it, right? If I didn't do that, the fire would die. So the reason I'm telling you this is I feel like there's something in your life where whatever you're working on, I would figure out what it is. It could be learning about it. It could be, you know, bringing it to new platforms. It could be doing things differently, whatever it is, whatever it is you work on. I would be kind of looking at how you can make yourself, it's not like you're making yourself more passionate. I feel like you're just feeding the fire, if that makes sense. You have the Ace of Cups, the Six of Wands, and the Three of Cups here. Uh, definitely a lot of reasons to celebrate is what's popping into my head with this Three of Cups. An another way to feed that fire is teamwork. I've been saying all year, teamwork, 
teamwork makes a dream work in 2022 and beyond, I would say for like the foreseeable future. Really, I believe we're entering into a time of co-creation. So anything you can do that like benefits other people, uh, but also benefits you again, this is not, you know, we're leaving this, um, you know, <laughs> I have a lot of bones to pick with the new age community. And and again, I, I realize that a lot of my own personal beliefs are new, like, you know, considered new age, right? But there are some things that I don't like about the new age community, of course. And, um, but what I would say is that I feel like kind of, and one of those things is like self-sacrifice, needing to sacrifice everything about yourself, needing to give, 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 and not fulfill yourself. Not everybody in this new age community believes that, but there are definitely some, you know, groups that believe that, right? And what I would say here is that it's not about that. Co-creation is about you scratch my back, I scratch yours, right? And I feel like we're creating a lot more abundance for everyone by kind of like working together with other people. But, you know, part of co-creation is, is, you know, a lot of people say, I don't like working with other people. I'm like, well, number one, learn. It's like people leave these comments and I'm always like, well, uh, okay, <laughs> enjoy your life. I don't care, right? It's like you're, you're only punishing yourself and so go for it, right? But what I would say is also, if you don't, if you truly don't like working with other people, I would still say, you know, try to, try to learn. It's not that difficult, right? But number two, what I would say is that inspiring other people, doing things that other people can look up to, right? We see that right here with these six of wands. Six of Wands is a card of excellence, it's a card of success, it's a card of achievements. Doing things that other people can look up to is also another great way to co-create. By um, You could be creating something. It's like, you know, a lot of people say they have a book inside them or they, you know, have something they want to create, like a piece of art. And I'm always, and, but they're afraid to, right? And I always say to those people, it's like, you could be stealing something from someone else who needs to hear your words, who needs to read your words, who needs to see your art, right? That is co-creation at its best. So I feel a lot of you, it's like there's something that needs to come out here, as I've been saying. It's almost like you're presenting something to the world. And I feel like it'll be very fulfilling right here. Ace of Cups. Ace of Cups is your emotions overflowing, a lot of happiness coming in for you. Uh, definitely a lot of good stuff. I do feel there could be love available to you. It just feels available <laughs> is what I would say. I kind of gotten the same thing for all three water signs. So take it how it resonates. You know, to me, tarot doesn't control your life. I don't even do love readings for the most part. If it comes up, I talk about it. I, I do whatever comes up readings, really. Sometimes I do love readings, but you know, that's if it comes up. Love isn't dominant here. I feel like it's available. I feel like you're very attractive at this time with that Empress card. So like I said, if you want to put yourself out there, definitely could be a love offer coming in for you. But really, I feel like this is talking about your personal fulfillment. And it kind of fits in with that fire card, like the energy that I feel on that fire card. The Ace of Cups is self-filling, right? It can easily reach down into that pool of water below it, and it can fill itself back up again. The fire card is, again, about building that fire. And it's like, so what, what are the things that you can do this month to make you feel passionate, especially around the 24th, this when Uranus goes retrograde, what are the things that can keep you going even with all this retrograde energy? Jupiter, Uranus, uh, we're gonna have Mar uh, Mars going retrograde this year, Mercury will be going retrograde in September, you know, slow down. So it's like, what are the things you can focus on that will keep you maybe motivated uh, or are there things that you can do where it's just easy for you to throw sticks in the fire? And, you know, the th and I kind of feel that energy with the fire card there. Uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, next, I didn't even pull one of these cards for this last row, so we'll do it right now. But for the new moon in Virgo on the 27th, you have this candle. It says, you will be shown the way on this card. Love it. And you also have this no place like home card as well. So I feel that some of you could be spending a lot of time home at home. I actually don't uh, think that's a bad thing. And I feel you could be receiving a lot of guidance from your community with both of these cards coming up together. I feel like the No Place Like Home card is talking about your community. And I will say that this could be a community that you like belong to online. For example, I don't, it could just be a place that feels like home to you, a place where you feel like you belong. Uh, in this row, you have the Hermit, the Justice card, and the Two of Pentacles. A lot of balance here. Even the Two of Pentacles is kind of like an energy of work hard, play hard. Virgo kind of not really, but kind of is about balance in some ways. I look at Virgo as, you know, the sign of health, right, in some ways. And so it's like, if we're not in balance, obviously we're not going to be healthy. So, you know, two of pentacles is work hard, play hard. And I feel it's going to be very important for you to make sure that you're like, if you're working really hard this month, that you're enjoying yourself. I also feel like it's just going to be important to balance things out in general. I also feel 
that the two of pentacles is kind of talking about um, spinning plates. Like I feel like you could be very, very busy. What I would say, and I've said to all three water signs, is justice. And justice is cause and effect. Justice says, if you put energy into something, do you get energy back? You know, plain and simple. You know, uh, back in the day, I had a, I was like a business, I worked with businesses for a long time. I still do from time to time. But you know, what I would say here is that a lot, you know, I used to work with some guys <laughs> and um, one, one guy I worked with in particular, it's like he was really good at going into businesses and just looking at the things that they were doing that were just a freaking waste of time. And just, he would charge them a bunch of money to go in there and say, stop doing this, stop doing this, stop doing this, and, and double down on this, this, and this, right? And he made a ton of money basically doing nothing, right? Well, he didn't really do nothing. He worked his ass off. But still, you know, the point is, is it really wasn't that difficult to go in and see that they were just banging their head against the wall in like three different, four different five different areas. That's what the justice card always reminds me of. It says there are things in life that we do that just don't get things going, right? They're just like a waste of time. And if we just focus on the things that work, right? I'm sure you've all heard there are tons of like, you know, spiritual teachers, business teachers, success teachers. They all basically say the same thing. They say, you know, double down on your strengths and ignore your weaknesses. That is the justice card. We can't be good at everything. So if you're trying to do everything, you basically do nothing. And the justice card says, focus on the things that return energy to you. That whole This whole entire reading is really focusing on that. And again, kind of seems to be a water energy for the month of August in general that you know us water signs, I feel, should be focusing on the things that fulfill us, that return energy to us. If we do that, we'll be much more successful. And that's what I'd be doing with the uh, justice card for sure. Uh, finally, you have the hermit here. <coughs> I do feel some of you could be dealing with a Virgo. Uh, I feel like this is a new Virgo. <laughs> Uh, for some of you, I feel it could be, this could be for Virgo rising out there, or I would say if you're a cross-watching Virgo with uh, Scorpio rising, definitely popping into my head here, um, or like Scorpio, something else in it, like a big planet. Uh, I feel like this is saying, again, something needs to come out. Like I was saying, something, I, I keep getting the word presentation, but I don't really necessarily think it's a presentation for some of you, maybe, but you see that the hermit, he has that star in his lantern. And I always say that the start, it's kind of like he's gone through something difficult. He's like done all the work. Now it's time to present it to the world. It's like now it's time that he, uh, you know, kind of proves it to himself that he can do something that he's been learning about or that he can do something that he's been thinking about. So again, really good reading, but I do feel the reading itself is saying it's time to throw some wood on the fire. It's time to um, present something that you've been working towards or working on for a very long time. And it's time to see if you can, you know, live up to your own expectations, which obviously I feel like you can very easily, but definitely the energy I get here. Uh, I'm just going to clarify like one card from each row. Um, we're not going to clarify the whole thing here because uh, we'll be here all day. But um, in your first row for the triple conjunction with that 10 of pentacles, you have the queen of pentacles. Uh, the queen of pentacles is a card of resourcefulness. So I definitely feel a major increase in your resources here. Uh, it looks like a very abundant reading, especially if you've been working towards this. Um, obviously, as I always tell people, it's like, you know, tarot isn't going to just like magically make money float into your life. You have to work for this money <laughs> or do something, provide value, right? And as long as you've been doing that, I feel like there's really good fortunes coming in for you, obviously, especially with that good fortune card. Uh, in your next row for the full moon in Aquarius with that three of wands, you have the five of swords. Five of swords says take a risk. So perfect card to get with the three of wands because three of wands is like, what are you waiting for? Remember I was saying presenting something, putting something out into the world like a baby, but maybe not really a baby. And the Five of Swords says, take the risk to do it because you will be very successful. Uh, with the Six of Wands here in this middle row with the Uranus Retrograde on the 24th, you have the Moon card. You know, the Moon card is very interesting because I personally consider the Moon card to be a good card. There's a path straight down the middle here of the Moon card, and the Moon card does not say stop. You know, I, I think a lot of people read this card and they make it seem like it's just a card of fears and mysteries and that you shouldn't go down a path. Uh, that's not what it says at all. There are some mountains in the background of the moon card. Mountains represent accomplishments. The moon really says, do not get off your path. It also is about kind of removing your emotional armor. It basically says that we have to take the, in everything we do in life, we kind of have to take the risk of potentially getting hurt. But, you know, that's like basically how we learn, right? And, you know, again, I'm not saying you're going to get hurt here. I'm, but what I'm saying is emotionally, right? There could be some pain if you have a failure. But it's like we never really learn our true potential unless we do that. And damn, Scorpio. That's what's popping into my head with this reading is I feel like you're kind of like learning your what you're truly capable of. And I kind of said that with the, with the Hermit card, the Virgo card there, but it's definitely popping into my head. We're going to clarify the Hermit. 
And you have the Queen of Cups, you. I read the Queen of Cups as you. I know a lot of readers read her as Cancer. Uh, personally, I read her as you. That's how I've always done it. And again, I feel like you're coming up in a very strong position. I feel like you are learning your true potential this month with all this energy. Uh, love it. Really simple. So thank you for being here, uh, Scorpio. I almost just said Virgo. <laughs> thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Let me know what you think of these main event readings where I cover like the main astrological things that are going on for the month. Let me know if you want me to do it again. But thank you and uh, definitely enjoy your month.